G'day, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be building part of <laughs> the Kyosho Turbo Scorpion. Basically, I'm just going to build the chassis and I'll, uh, I'll do the paint and the radio in the next video. Alrighty, let's get into it. So for the servo, I'll be using a Power HD HD 3001 HB servo, a nice Reedy Raiden 19 turn motor, a Fataba R202GF receiver, and a Hobbywing 1060 brushed ESC. Got all the parts laid out there, ready to go. Let's get into it. So the first thing we do is screw on the front shock mounts. Screw them onto the chassis rail, then we've got the, um, the supporting rod that goes between the chassis rails. We screw that in too. Now we can get onto the servo saver. And after doing a few of these, I found the easiest way is probably get your center post and sit it on a flat surface. Then grab your spring and put it on. Then grab the bottom part of the servo, servo saver and slip that over. Then the top part, push both of those down to compress the spring and then put your e-clip on. And uh, then you can snap that on with pliers. Give it a little test. She's good to go. Now on to steps five and six. Seven and eight. <laughs> We've got parts bag B open, so there's a lot more parts out there now. And something I missed earlier was the uh, the screws and nuts on the top of the shock towers to hold the shocks on. So I've put them on now. <laughs> and a couple of things to look out for here. The rear uh, chassis braces. Pay attention to uh, the way they curve down at the back. Both of them got to face down. And this rod that goes across the front that holds the uh, the front arms and stuff on got these little clamps and they've got marks on them and you've got corresponding marks on the rod so you've got to line them up now we can get onto the diff it's starting to get interesting now <laughs> um, one thing you want to look at is the uh, the diff bearings as you can see one side slips on pretty easily but the other one's very tight so on the tight side I just uh, pull the bearing down as far as I can so it's as straight as I can get it then put the side plate on and use that to pull the bearing down the rest of the way. Basically just crush it on. <laughs> you don't want to go hitting it with a hammer or anything like that. And you'll feel when it snaps on and hear it too. <laughs> so now I've got the diff all greased up nicely. It's time to put the side plate on. I like to do this up in a cross pattern just so it's, you know, make sure it pulls up square. And then we can put the motor guard on. I guess we call it a guard, kind of a support. This just kind of helps if the car gets a knock from the back, it, you know, it won't bend the motor plate. Um, like Ultima is a big for that. <laughs> so we've got two gearing options, and I'm going with the kit standard one, which is the 6.9 to 1. So that's a 30, 31 tooth pinion and a 38 tooth spur gear. The other option is 8.3 to 1, where you've got a 28 tooth pinion and a 41 tooth spur. Now we can have a quick look at our Reedy Raiden 19 turn motor. And as you can see, it's fully rebuildable, bearings, both ends, and adjustable timing. Now with the motor all mounted, I went ahead and mounted the rear shock tower. And now it's time to get onto the rear roll cage. Now this will give you a wrist a good workout, or give you a lot of pain, one or the other. <laughs> I did think of using a power tool to do them up, maybe halfway, but I didn't do it. Um, didn't want to risk, you know, chewing out the plastic uh, roll cage. And there we go, as you can see, we've got the uh, gearbox mounted onto the chassis and the roll cage is tightened down onto the chassis. And from there, we can get on to uh, putting our little lower shock mount balls on the uh, on the rear arms. So we've got our nut on there first. And we do them up and, uh, and you've got to measure that they're sticking out eight millimeters. Then we can put our axles in. So we've got a bearing first, stick the axle through, another bearing. Then we've got our uh, hex adapters. Now on the hex adapter, you've got a, a threaded side with a bigger hole and a smaller hole on the other side. So take note of that. And we've got our little screw that's it's like a pin with a grub screw on one end. So we can put them in and tighten them up. And that's it. Our hex adapter's on there. Now we can do the same with the other side. All right, time to put the rear arms on now. Now with these little mounts, the, the holes that go through them are angled so it goes down in this direction so I just do them up not tight just uh, so I can still move them 
well that one's not the best example but <laughs> yeah I don't do them up real tight just so I can push that rod through and uh, later on after I put the arms on I'll tighten them up so I bang a little bit of oil on some things the dog bone there bit of tamia oil I know oils ain't oils but whatever <laughs> I'll stick the dog bone in put the arm on roughly there put a bit of oil on the uh, on the pin and then we can slip that through through the holes needs a bit of a wiggle and you just push it through so it's flush on each end or as flush as you can get it then we can stick our grub screws in Turn them up pretty tight. Nip them up a little bit. Still moving free. Now we can just do up the uh, screws in the bottom, make sure they're tight. There we can go. We can get onto the other one now. And that's our rear arms ready to go. Now time to get onto the shocks. Now I'm not going to go right through the build process of the shocks. We've all seen them before. <laughs> um, you can check out some of my other videos if you like. They are actually built different. All the shock bodies are the same. But the springs are a different length. The front are naturally shorter. Anyway. Uh, on the front you'll also run this spacer on the outside. Whereas you don't on the rears. And the pistons are different. On the, uh, on the front. They're marked B, and on the rears, they're marked A. So there's something to look out for. Yeah, and there's all our shocks built. Got the fronts here and the rears there. Very nice. I always like these Kyosho red shocks. I think we should just take a moment to admire them. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've got the rear shocks on. They're all fitted up, looking nice, and they work pretty good. <laughs> so now we're moving on to the front suspension. And when you put these balls in, you, you put the nut on the ball and put the ball into the uh, swing arm there. You just got to measure that it sticks out eight millimeters. It's pretty good to me. So now we can go and uh, yeah. Fit up the front suspension, put the shocks on, and we'll be looking like a buggy. Now you can see I've fitted the roll bar already. Two screws, pretty simple. <laughs> now we can move on to uh, step 21, and we open bag D. And that's for our steering knuckles and stuff like that. So I've laid the some of the parts out and uh, got the steering knuckles there and the tie rods and trimmed the tie rod ends off the tree, so they're ready to go. So I'll get onto the steering knuckles. So I've put all the tie rod ends on. They're all looking pretty good. Measuring them up in the manual. And done the steering knuckles. There's a couple of things you need to measure when you're doing them. The uh, the ball for the tie rod needs to be sticking out 8.5 mil. It's pretty good. And the one in the top here for the uh, for the upper arm, that's got to be 7.5 mil. That's pretty good. So I've done both of them. And then you got the uh, the front caster block so you've got to yeah, thread lock that one in there and it's got to be sticking out five and a half mil and we're pretty good there too alrighty so now we can put the front end together and there we go that's the front end together and one thing you need to look at is the uh, the tie rods measure that they're only three to four mil off the chassis rail there once we're in the center, when everything's relaxed. And yeah, we've got about three, three and a half mil. That one's a little bit too high, so I'll move it down a bit. Yeah, it's looking good. There we go, about three and a half mil. Beautiful. 
Alrighty, now we can get on to putting the tub on there. And that's our tub all fitted. Two screws. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I skipped ahead and uh, put the tyre foams in and glued the tyres on. And mounted the wheels. So that's it. That's our progress so far. I'll hold the wheels still because otherwise they flop everywhere. <laughs> but there he is. Looks pretty cool, I think. Yeah. So in the next video, I'll put the radio in uh, and paint the body and fit the roll cage, things like that. Um, didn't do it in this video because it just makes it too long um, by the time I paint the driver and all that. Um, so yeah, that video should be out in a couple of days, I think. Uh, one thing I will do, I'll probably I'll run it with these wheels, but I'll swap uh, for the shelf. I've got some uh, chrome, actually, uh, alloy wheels. And I've got some Repro Sand Super pin spike tyres, like the, the first Turbo Scorpion had. So I'll probably put those on at the end of the next video, give you a look at that. Um, and yeah, so it'll sit on the shelf with those on it, I think. <laughs> and yeah, keep these ones for running. Alright, well that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you got something from it. Um, yeah, as I say, the, the next video for this one will be out in a couple of days. Also, my paint has arrived for the mirrors for that uh, HKS Skyline, which is over there on the floor. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, so I've got to get onto those stickers, put those stickers on. I can paint me mirrors. So that'll be finished this week, I hope. Uh, this coming week. Yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here, subscribe. That'd be great. If you liked it, leave a thumb up. That'd be awesome. And uh, catch you later. <laughs>